Funding for this video is brought to you in part by Book of the Month and from viewers like you. Thank you. What's up, punks? And welcome to video. Movie magic. <laughs> First of all, I just want to thank everybody for their patience and kindness for the sporadic uploading schedule that this year has had for us, thanks to my health. I'm not doing well. I haven't been doing well. This has been ever present in the videos. What makes me sicker and slower is not 100% of my personality, but it does affect 100% of my life. However, what we do here, it sparks joy. So, low energy, but still ready to party. And if you're new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, hello, my name is Allie. Around these parts, we balance daily life alongside disability, celebrate mundanity, and read a whole lot. Of books and I assume that the last one applies to you as well seeing as you clicked on this video and that's great because today I'm going to share with you a really fun way to knock out your end of your reading goals the clocks are falling back the days are getting shorter the motivation is dwindling we're gonna fix that we're gonna be breaking down the readathon that I host that takes place in November and so if you're struggling with understanding the bingo board or if you're struggling to make a TBR not only is this video here to help you but also today's sponsor who is none other than book of the bump. Now what this long-term friend slash monthly subscription service does for us is boosts our reading experience by boosting our reading discoveries. Because what they're doing is focusing on new and emerging authors that we may have missed out on without their help. With book of the month, we get to choose between their monthly curated selection of new hardcover or audiobook options and even select from their vast backlist collection. Plus the pressure is off seeing as you can push pause on any month for any reason without being charged or penalized. My personal favorite part. I have selected two books from their November selections. The first one being The Last Love No by Emma Gray, which is a romance that takes place in Australia. And the cover looks beachy and fun and light, yes, but do not be fooled. I read a bunch of reviews that say that this holds so much more of a punch than you are anticipating. We apparently experienced the full range of human emotions. So personally, I couldn't help myself. I also scooped up What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. And this is a YA fantastical historical fiction blended with ancient Egyptian mythology and romance. There's adventure and magic. This book seems to have it all complete with a stellar cover. So honestly, I didn't think I could go wrong here either. So if you want to save time, have a whole lot of fun, and get new books shipped straight to your door, then you can click the link in the description box below and get your first book from Book of the Month for just $9.99 using the code Allison Pages at checkout. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's video, Book of the Month. Now, let's break down this little life hack on how to read more to end off your year. And that is with the Bloom and Readathon, of course, which is the readathon that I've hosted for two years on this channel. This will be our third. I'm so excited. By the time you're watching this, technically, legally, we are five days in to said festivities, but that's okay. You can celebrate for as long as as little as you need. You can join as late or as early as you like. The theme of this whole thing really is to do what you want. I've been getting a lot of questions about what even is a readathon. So to answer that, it's plain and simple. It is a little challenge to give you prompts and you pick books for the prompts and you get silly little points. And the way that we keep track of our points and our prompts is with this bingo board that I drew with my own hands in 2021. She has not changed at all. She is our baby. Now the way that you use this is entirely up to you. You can try and get a bingo straight across, diagonal, whichever way. You can just try and get as many points as you want. You can try and fill up the whole dang thing. Truly whatever works best for you and that you feel like doing, that's what you do. As long as you're reading, you're winning, essentially. This is supposed to be fun and cozy. Take it as slowly or as seriously as you need. If you want to double up on points, you find a book that fits multiple spaces, go ahead and give yourself multiple points. Nobody's keeping track. Nobody's looking over your shoulder. Nobody's grading your bingo board. You do what you want. We are just here in the month of November to boost each other during this strange transitional time when reading just doesn't seem to be happening as much. Now there are these little printable snails and mushrooms and flowers that you can get on the Patreon. You can print this out, cut them out, put glue or tape on the back and give yourself points. I'm going to give us a point for the free space now because you don't need to do anything to get a point for the free space. You already start off winning. It's a great feeling. <laughs> also through the Patreon, you can join our Discord, which is very active and we talk about all kinds of things, pets, food, video games, etc. But it is especially bumping this time of year in the book chats. Everyone's encouraging each other. We're talking TBRs. We're talking what we've read. We're boosting each other up. It's a great time. The principles in the Discord are just for a dollar. If you just want to join for November and then leave, you're welcome to do that. If you don't want to do that at all, if you can't, you're not feeling it, also totally fine. Never any pressure whatsoever. You can still very much participate in this readathon for no dollars at all. The bingo board and the breakdowns is available on Instagram. I will be on there occasionally throughout the month. I won't be able to see and share everything. One, I'm just one girl. Two, I have screen time limits. Three, I don't check social media every day. It's something that I've been implementing since the start of 2023. So I apologize if I miss something, but the point of this is not to connect with me. It's to connect with other Bloomin' readers. So go ahead and use the hashtag Bloomin' Rats on the posts that you post and the things that you create if you want to participate community-wise. If you do not have Instagram, I have found a solution. 
for how to download and print out the bingo board if you'd like. On allisonpages.com, I have posted the exact same printables. She has logged into her Wix account and she figured some things out. So it's on there as well. I also love to see the vlogs that you create if you're a YouTube maker person. There's also a story graph to keep track and add your books into the community world. There's lots of free options. So the too long didn't listen edition, printable cutout sheets and discord community. One buck through Patreon for free Instagram community. Hashtag Lumen Rat story graph. Bingo board on Instagram and AllisonPages.com. Does that sound good? What is probably still confusing is what the heck all of these little symbols mean. So what I have on this shelf are a bunch of books that I've selected from my TBR shelf. I've yet to read them. There are possibilities that I can read from Blue and Readathon. Have I ever stuck to my TBR? No. We are mood readers in this house. Plus I cannot read over 30 books in a month. Once again, just one girl. But this is just a hypothetical TBR to give you a better idea of what each space means. Okay, let's do it. Round one, space one. The B space. The buzzy B space, if you will. And this is for a book on your shelf that has a lot of buzz. That's what makes this space so fun is that what your friends and mutuals and corners of the internet are discussing is gonna be different for everybody. So I've got a couple on my mind here. The first is Rouge by Mona Awad, which is a lit fic about mother-daughter relationships and beauty standards. This one just, just, just came out. And in my corner of the internet, I feel like a lot of the cool girls are reading this at the present time. And so if you wanna take the freshly published buzzy route, here is an example of that. But also The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty could also work for me for this space, even though it was published about a year ago because the buzz for me is still very loud. I feel like a lot of people are still picking this one up and loving it. This is a pirate adventure historical fantasy and I'm really looking forward to picking it up. So really for the beast face, just anything that you see talked about often. It can even be a book that your friend has just been recommending to you forever. You know, do what you want. Up next is The Cloud Space, which is for a book that will make you emotional in a sad way. Don't worry, we have other emotions on the board. We'll get to them. But something that I know will make me sad is Emma Bolden's The Tiger in the Cage, a memoir of a body in crisis because coming from someone who suffers from a lot of chronic pain, chronic illness, constantly advocating for myself for doctors, not feeling like I'm being heard, things of the like. I know that reading this memoir is going to bum me out, but hopefully empower me as well. But I also expect to get very sad. This is also a nonfiction, so it could count for the nonfiction tree of wisdom space. Now on the flip side, we have the sun space, which is for a book that will make you happy. And for this space, I chose Before We Say Goodbye by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is the most recently published book from the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. It's the fourth one. It's about a magical cafe that allows its patrons to travel through time. And they always just leave me feeling so warm and happy. They celebrate the many ways that human beings can love each other. So sunshine book. Next is the moon space. And the idea for this space is that no matter where you are, no matter where you're from, no matter where you live, we all sleep under the same moon. So to get points for this space, you need to read something that takes place in a country that you do not live in or are from. Now, my health started really declining this summer. And so I wasn't able to truly properly, seriously celebrate Women in Translation Month. So I have quite a few options here because I meant to share them with you months ago and I've been excited about them ever since. So one of them I have here is Celestial Bodies by Joka Alharti, translated by Marilyn Booth. And this spans decades following three sisters in the country of Oman. Their lives all weave very different paths as they make very different choices. And I'm just really excited to learn more about a place that I do not know enough about. I also have Minor Detail by Adana Shibli, translated by Elizabeth Jacquet. And this takes place in Palestine in 1949. It's a haunting meditation on displacement. And at least at the time of filming this video, it is actually free on Libro FM if you happen to be an audiobook person. I also have Independence by Shitra Banerjee Diva Karuni. It's a story that takes place in Bengal, India and also follows three sisters. I just love sibling stories. So both of these could count for the daffodil space. What this one does is helps the reader witness and understand the partition split that took place in India at this time. I've even got a graphic novel for you for the moon space. And that is Aya Life in Yap City by Marguerite Ebouet and Clement Abouriri, translated by Helga Dasher. This is actually technically three graphic novels all smooshed into one. And it's a YA historical fiction that takes place in 1978 in the Ivory Coast. It follows our protagonist Abouet's life in Yap City. And I'm always looking for graphic novel wrecks, but especially from ones from around the world. So if you have any more on your mind, I'm always excited to read what recommendations you may have for me. Now I could go on, but we must continue to the next space, which I also have a few books for, and it's for a very good reason. It's the Tree of Knowledge space, which is essentially the nonfiction space. And the reason I picked multiple books is that I know that a lot of folks are intimidated by nonfiction, but I'm very passionate about nonfiction, and I'm always looking to get more people to feel confident about picking up a nonfiction. So I'm here to give you a few options. Some that I have in my TBR that I'm so excited to read include The Rest of the Earth by Franz Fanon, translated by Richard Philcox, which offers an iconic analysis 
synthesis of the psychology of colonization and revolution. I've had this on my online TBR for over a year and I'm so excited to finally have my paws on it. We also have Manufacturing Consent by Edward S. Herman and Noam Chomsky, The Political Economy of the Mass Media. This one critiques the damaging effects of the 24 hour news cycle as well as analyzing propaganda and how it's used to manipulate us. So these are more political, historical, sociological. If you love queer theory, might I recommend? This has always been a war, the radicalization of a working class queer by Lori Fox. Another book I wanted to read this summer, I had bought this one for Pride Month, but alas, my body had other plants. It's all about how capitalism infiltrates every aspect of our life, including our sexuality. But if you're very new to the nonfiction world and you're very intimidated by everything I've recommended and everything else you seem to be exposed to, I understand, let me recommend something softer. Here I have Upstream by Mary Oliver, which are some selected essays by one of my favorite poets. I'm sure that these soothing essays will make for a great introduction into your nonfiction adventure, a gentle gateway complete with plants to lead you to the tougher stuff. Just one more, I promise, another great way to dip your toes into nonfiction is to read memoirs because memoirs are nonfiction. But an even more accessible way to read a memoir is to read a graphic memoir, which is one of my favorite genres ever. And so here I have In Limbo by Deb J.J. Lee, which is a Korean American's coming of age story. It's technically YA. Throughout, it's this very gentle blue. I just dare you to marinate in this art and tell me that you're not a nonfiction person. So lots and lots of educational routes to choose from if you'd like to get some points. The Tree of Wisdom space. Okay, we've made it to row two. We'll get more rapid fire now, I promise. The first space is the daffodil space, which is a space for non-romantic love, so think best friends, think siblings. So for this space, I have selected The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary, which is a French language story translated by Alison Anderson. One of my favorite ways to explore existential life questions is when a young character and an older character's ideas join forces and mash, and apparently this book does that. So sign me up twice. The next space is the cacti space, which is for a book that is less on the needy side, much like a cacti. So anything shorter, but this could also be an anthology. So a collection of short stories, which could be a big book, but since they're short stories, do what you want. This is a great chance to read a novella or a poetry collection or a graphic novel. They all work perfectly here. For the sake of this video, I picked an anthology because I tend to struggle with that genre, but I have one that I feel confident about. It's Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. Did you know that the author of Our Wives Under the Sea had a short story collection? It apparently has a very similar flavor in exploring body horror and discomfort and it's gothic and unsettling, question mark. I've been hyped to pick this one out now for a little bit. Up next is a variegated space. And what this means is just to read a book that is on the rarer side. So something that you don't see get talked about very much, something that has few reviews on Goodreads, that type of thing. And for this I chose La Bastarda by Trifonia Melibia Obono, translated by Lawrence Schimmel. And this is a very short story about an orphan teen girl who lives under the watchful eye of her grandmother in Equatorial Guinea. So also, if you're not from Equatorial Guinea, this could count for the moon space too. Our protagonist is questioning and challenging social norms. Less than 100 pages, less than 200 reviews. Again, could count for many spaces. Up next is the propagation adaptation space. And what a propagation is, is when you cut a leaf off of one plant to make a new plant for it to grow its own roots. So now you have two plants, but from the same plant. So the way that this applies to books is that you pick a book that has an adaptation of some kind. So maybe a movie, a video game, a TV show. I picked up Sweet Tooth by Jeff Lemire. This is the compendium actually. So every sweet tooth to ever sweet tooth. This is a story about a community of human animal hybrid people. And our protagonist is looking for refuge of his kind. There are apparently two seasons of this now adapted on Netflix. So I get to pick up a book that I've been meaning to read for the longest time and get points on a bingo board. Everybody wins. And the last space in row two is the spider's face, which is simply for any book that is on the darker side. Dark themes, maybe the cover is dark. Maybe the word dark is in the title, you know? Allow me to emphasize again, to do what you want. And for this one, I selected our book club book for the month of November, which is Where They Burn Books, They Also Burn People by Marcos Antonio Hernandez. Our book club for this channel is The Pocket Pages, and you can join us by joining that Patreon tier that we discussed earlier in the video. One buck a month, we read 12 books a year and discuss in a temporary Discord server, so you don't need to be available for any live streams. If you read alongside us, there's no way to miss out on the discussion. Time zones cannot stop us. We have a lot of fun. The themes of this book, much less so, which is why we get a point for the spider space when we read this one together, because it's about Catholicism's dark and sordid past, not only against history, but against the Mayan people. I've also heard that this book is on the slower burning end of things, so it could count for the snail space. I've also checked and there's only like 50 or so reviews on Goodreads, so also a rare variegated book. Once again, double up, get a little crazy. But for now, we are at row three. Space number one is the lotus space. And since lotus flowers grow through the mud, this space is for disability representation because we are all out here growing through the muds of adversity ourselves. So pick up a book that has an author with a disability. There's disability featured within the pages. Maybe the character has a disability. Maybe it's a nonfiction about a disability. But for this one I chose. Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. I read Elle McNichol's other book earlier this year. Loved it so much. Apparently all of her books feature autism and being somebody who is autistic, I love seeing that representation. This one is an emotional middle grade dystopic sci-fi type story. Apparently shows us all to celebrate our different
differences and that kind of thing. I know I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be great. Up next we have the succulent space and for this space all you gotta do is read a book that makes you hot. Do I mean hot like steamy sexy hot? Yes. Do I mean hot like I'm so mad it's making me hot and angry? Yes. Or maybe do what I have done most years and you pick a book that has a literal hot fire cover. <laughs> yes. Everything, yes. And I did it again this year because I selected Elsewhere by Alexis Shaken for this space, which is a dystopic story about a community where mothers keep going missing. It's really giving me midsummer energy. I've been excited to read this one for a long time. Plus, hello, hot fire, much like the succulent, thrives under the burning sun. Points. 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 Up next, of course, is the free space, which you've already got a point for. Good job. Next to that, the lily space, which is for a book that covers grief or death. And now you can interpret this how you would like and pick something that suits your needs and feelings. You can pick a very serious book like Will and Testament by Vigis Yorth, translated by Charlotte Barslin, which is an Norwegian story about horrific conflicts and childhood trauma and terrible secrets. You get a point. Or you can pick up something sillier like Mort by Terry Pratchett because the protagonist of this book is death himself. Loopholes. This is your life. Read what you are ready for, what you are comfortable with, and what will make you happy in the end. And last but not least in row three is The Snail Space, which is for a book that is a slower burn. On Storygraph, they do have pacing rating scales for you. So if you usually read really fast-paced books and you pick up something that's on the medium side, that counts. You could also pick something that you want to read slower, something you want to savor, or something you assume is just going to take a really long time. Pick a long-ass book if you want. I took a little twist with this choice, and I selected The Rules We Play by Saba Khan. This is a graphic memoir, and it explores the British-Pakistani diaspora through the lived experiences of our author. But Ali, it's a graphic novel. That's gonna take you no time at all. Fair, however, counterpoint, there's a lot more writing in this graphic novel. It is rich with experience and history. It seems so good and so powerful, but it also seems to be a graphic novel that takes up a little bit more of your time. I will be taking my precious time here. So go ahead, give this one a scoop, and give yourself a point for the snail space. I'm going to. Two rows left. Row four, space one, the water space. This is to read a book from an author that you are thirsty to read more of, so you can continue on with the series, for example, one that you're loving. I'm in a few right now. I'm currently reading the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers, who is the author of my favorite books of all time, the Monk and the Robot duology. I'm also in the middle of quite a few graphic novel series. I'm reading Lumberjanes, I'm reading Giant Days, I'm reading I Hate Fairyland. However, when it comes to standalone books from authors that I would like to read more of, give another shot, I enjoyed our experience together, would like to make some more memories, that kind of thing. I've also read everything by Samantha Schwablin, which is this iconic Argentinian author, except for one book. And that final book in her discography, for me is Mouthful of Birds, translated by Megan McDowell, which are short horror slash magical realism stories. Up next is the fertilizer space, which is a space that will nourish your soul. Something so cozy, something so good that feels like a warm blanket. I actually recently made a video with over 50 book recommendations that are on the cozier end of things. So we're not going to spend too much time here, are we? No. But personally, I would love to be continuing my reading of the Moomin series by Toby Janssen, translated by Elizabeth Porsche. These are children's classics, Finnish fairy tale type stories. So think Frog and Toad, think Winnie the Pooh, very similar energy. I read the first one. This is the second one. I love it so much. It's a hug in book form. Fertilizer space. We then have the green carnation space, which is a chance to read a book by a queer author or featuring LGBTQ plus characters or themes. I actually chose a nonfiction for this one, and that is How Far the Light Reaches, Life in 10 Sea Creatures by Sabrina M. Blur. This is all about 10 different sea creatures and how they overcome and adapt, and we explore both themes of sexuality and survival. I've heard nothing but good things about this one. We then have the tulip space, which is either for a romantic book, or if you're not a big romance reader, that's fine. You can pick up a book that you think you'll love, a five-star prediction. I very recently found a five-star romance book. I'm looking to kick my little feet and feel those feelings again. So here I have Love on the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood. I am pleasantly guilty of enjoying her other book, The Love Hypothesis. This is another science-y STEM romance touching butts, stethoscopes, I don't know, what do scientists do type story. <laughs> and I also have A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is a cozy fantasy witchy romance that, again, have not heard any complaints about. This seems so far up my alley. If I don't read this this November, I will be quite displeased. Okay, do you want to chug water together as friends? <sighs> we got some on our shirt. That's okay. Cheers. Supposed to cheers before, but do what you want. <laughs> up next, we have the ladybug space, and this is one of our previously confusing spaces ever because I thought that ladybugs ate your garden, but I was surely mistaken. Apparently, some might, I don't know, for the most part, they don't. However, the meaning of this space remains because what ladybugs do is eat the bugs that eat your garden, which is even more metal than we previously thought. So, what this space is for is to read a book that seems deceptively sweet on the outside but covers some very serious ground on the inside. This is a space that is very easy to double up on the spider space. I've got two. I'm not doing very 
good at limiting. I just have a lot of books that I'm really excited about and I haven't been able to make as many videos on the internet.com as I wanted to. So there's all this excitement pent up within me and so many stories that I've been meaning to talk to you about and I'm using this video as an excuse to do that. Thank you for your time. <laughs> so for this space, I selected Squire by Sarah Alfie and Nadia Shamas, which seems like, oh, what a cute, what a cute graphic novel. Oh, look at cute, sunny adventure. We're just having a time. How beautiful. No, wrong. This one explores not only colonialism, but the psychological implications of war on the individual. In fact, it would be a wild but fitting line not to read The Wretched of the Earth together with this one. Thoughts and Plans. I also have A Beautiful Darkness by Fabienne Bellman and Kara Skoué, translated by Helga Dasher, because it looks so cute on the outside. I bought this one because I'm like, oh, cute, cozy graphic novel. And then when I hauled it, and every time I mention it, I get at least 10 comments telling me it is not cute and cozy. <laughs> Brace yourself. Because it's apparently a very unsettling anti-fairy tale. So, afraid but intrigued. Ladybug space. And finally, row five, the final row. We've come so far. The first space is the root space, which is to return to your roots. So, a reread. Easy peasy, simple pipple, living greasy. Seeing as I've been struggling so hard with the mental and physical health. All I want to do is reread my favorite books of all time, A Psalm for the Wild Bill and A Prayer for the Crown Tribe of Becky Chambers. First book, second book, best books ever. Cozy fantasy about two unlikely friends joining forces, accessibly exploring philosophical concepts. It's just the best. It's been over a year. It's time for a reread. I think I'm gonna do that. However, if I'm looking for a challenge, there's always Matilda by Roald Dahl. Martin hit Nederlands. I have this one in Dutch. So if I'm looking to return to my childhood, but also learn some and practice my second language, also enough. This is the perfect example of taking this readathon as slow or as serious as you need. Do I need to tell you what Matilda's about? Little girl, magical powers, out of school, mean principal, friendship, chocolate cake. <laughs> Up next we have The Earth Space, which is for a book that was published before 1990. And for this I chose Letters to a Young Poet by Rainier Maria Rilke. This is written by a German poet. It spans 10 essays and they're apparently life-changing, brain chemistry altering, to the point that people are still making these claims almost a hundred years later. Do I have any idea what's in store for me? No. Is it super Super short, yeah. Up next we have the Ivy space, which is pretty similar to the Buzzy Bee space. The difference between the two, and there isn't much. So again, feel free to double up. The Buzzy Bee space is for something that is currently popular. People will not shut up about this book. You see it all over the dang place. Ivy space, maybe no one's talking about it. It's crickets. But you still go on Storygraph for Goodreads and it has four or more stars. So climb in the charts like an Ivy, but go ahead and be as silly and goofy as you need. A book that fits this for me is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This book was published in 2015, even though this is almost 10 years old. Whenever someone Someone picks it up, they will be screaming from the rooftops about how good it is. It's a sci-fi end of world fantasy. Apparently the character building is top notch. The world building is flawless. It's a page turning story. And there's just endless reasons why everybody's geeking over it. And it's got me believing that even though I'm not the biggest high stakes fantasy person, that I will love this. So really excited. The back says, this is the way the world ends for the last time. It starts with death. It starts with betrayal. Dun, dun, dun. Up next is a dandelion space. And even though I think dandelions are very pretty and I loved picking them for my mom and feeding them to my guinea pigs, they are technically, legally speaking, a weed. So this is for a book that you've had on your TBR shelf for far too long. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to finally read it. Bite that bullet. It could be something you actually own that's physically been in your home, or it could also be a book that's been on your online TBR shelf forever. Do whatever you need to do. For me, it's a combination of both. It's The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I have been meaning to read this book since I was a sad Tumblr teen. Didn't get around to it. Then in college, so certain I was going to read it. Didn't get around to it. And now I've owned it for a couple of years and I still have not uh, gotten around to it. It's time. And despite her flaws abound that I have seen on the internet.com. She has still paved the way for unwell women and the fig tree allegory it's me up even though I haven't read it. So I gotta read it all right. It's fiction about a woman. 1953. Depression. Need I say more? And last but not least we have the mall space which is for a book with a strong antagonist or a bad guy. In other words, this bad guy could be something from a nonfiction. You read about something historical. I'm gonna take the fun route because we've already chosen some pretty serious books and remind you that thriller and horror is a great route to take for this space because an antagonist is very clear. There's usually spooky ghost, spooky criminal, spooky crimes. So here I have The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This is about a spooky house inheritance, historical fiction, haunted, takes place after the Mexican War of Independence. Is the house the bad guy? I don't know, I have to find out. We have to read it and find out, but I do know that the antagonist is strong and that's that. I have such a giant stack of books in front of me right now. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to get around to all of these, but I wish I had the superpowers to do so. But once again, what are we? Just one girl. But anyway, that is the breakdown of the Boom and Readathon. Download the bingo board, print it out if you want, give yourself some points, get such 
psyched to read again, even though it's cold and weird outside if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're feeling social, go ahead and use the hashtag Bloomin' Rat and log your books on the Storygraph Challenge if you want to get a quick splash of serotonin in. And if you have a buck and you want to join, you can talk to us in the Discord and get little printable point tracker thingies. I can't wait to see what you make and create and post. Thank you so much for reading with me. By the time this video goes up, the festivities have legally been going on for five days. It goes on till the 30th, but that's okay. Join whenever you want. Keep your bingo board till the end of the year if you want to fill it all up. Print it out on January 1st and use it all year as a guide for your reading adventures. Do whatever you want. I can't emphasize that enough. Outside of the Bloomin' world as well. Live your life. Live your truth. Now because of where my body has been at, I cannot promise any sort of uploading schedule. But the plan in my heart and soul is to have two reading vlogs. It all depends on my flawed physical form, but that's okay. And I can't wait to see what kind of cozy vlogs y'all create as well. Speaking of cozy, yeah. friendly reminder that our snail shirts and our embroidered spoon shirts are available until the 26th of November. So there's about 20 days left if you want to pre-order. If you want more information on all this, it's at the very beginning of our last video. I'll link that down below. Essentially, please, please, please double, triple check the size charts because every country sizes things differently and I want you to be happy and comfy in what you get. Track your packages so they don't get lost. And thank you so much to everyone who has already placed a pre-order for their comfy charitable wearables. And thank you so much to everyone at patreon.com who support this channel each and every day. Y'all are the bread and butter of this operation. If you'd like to join the book club, get funky fresh downloadables, join our chatty discord and more that will be linked down below. And also another super special thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Remember you can get your first book through Book of the Month for just $9.99 by clicking the link in the description box below and using code Allison Pages at checkout. Happy reading everybody. Happy Bloomin' Readathon everybody. And as always, thank you for clicking. Thank you for caring and thank you for being nice. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.